Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today, inshallah, we shall continue uh, our survey and study of kingdom fungi. Now, the question is, do you say fungi or fungi? They're both okay, but I prefer fungi because you say fungus, you don't say fungus. You. But anyway, they're both okay. Fungi or fungi. I say fungi. Anyway, so previously we have talked about uh, the phylum uh, Zygomycota. We have also talked about. Have we talked about? No, have we not talked about yet? Inshallah, today then we shall talk about the Ascomycotes, the second category the, uh, of the four major phylums, the four major divisions of kingdom fungi. From the previous time, the Zygomycotes, the, uh, one example was the, the Rhizopus uh, mold, the bread mold, okay? The one that did made the spores like and then you know those funky things now the ascomycotes they are known also popularly as sac fungi now many of them look like sac like things like cup like thing but that's not where they're called sac okay but they're uh, commonly referred to as sac fungi okay now, some of these are edibles, and I'm told they're quite, uh, some of them can be quite expensive, like the morals and the truffles and things. So some of these are uh, are edibles, fungi, okay? And some of them are not edibles. And the Ascomycotes apparently is the largest of the phylum, the largest of the phylum, some 30,000 species or something. So... Here's one example of the Ascomycotes, the sac fungi. But as I said, they are called sac fungi not because they look like sac, because clearly the moral didn't look like a sac, right? They're called sac fungi because they make spores, they make spores in something called ascus, which is either Latin or Greek for sac, right? So and so they make their spores in, in these structures that are called sacs. So that's a sac, okay? And the, 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 their spores are called the ascospores because they come from the sacs, which are known as the ascus. So the sac is the ascus, and the spores are made there, and uh, that's why they're called the sac fungi, okay? The ascospores. Okay. Now all of them will do this, but they will have, depending on which of these you're studying, they will look different. So here's the moral again, and that's the ascospores. You see the little sac, and there are not that many of them in each individual sac, are there? Right? It's like if you have a sack of, you know, change, you're not going to have a million dollars worth of change in there. You're going to have a little bit of change, but you can be a lot. So here's the sac fungi. Now, the thing to understand about this is like this, okay? Now, before you realize that, you know, if you look at the mold and the bread mold, you see most of it was haploid, right? Most of the bread mold with by weight of it was haploid, okay? And same with this category of fungi. So let's see. Now here you have in front of you a sac fungi over here, right? And at the, in the sacs, one of those ascospores, right? In the ascus, they say, now here is a little spore coming over here, okay? Now that's a haploid spore. Now if you know, a haploid spore is sufficient to go in there, fly over or, or whatever, and start a new fungus colony on it by itself. So spore lands, so whatever it wants to land, starts making them high phase and stuff like that, mycelium, right? Cause trouble, right? So now this, this sac fungus over here, that you see over here, is one of these guys over here on the ground. Okay, but the sacs are released up into the air and they fly with the wind because they're so tiny and they can possibly land, for example, on this flowering plant over there. You see that? Now, you ever wonder, you wonder, I don't know about you, but I used to wonder, wait, wait a minute, you know? Is it okay? I get it, okay? I get the fact that ha most of the fungus is like haploid, right? But that's kind of like half a human being kind of thing, right? How does that work? But you have to understand, most of your genes are silent anyways, right? You follow what I'm saying? Half the genes are like silent to begin with. Like you have, you know, mom gene, dad gene, one of them is usually speaks for the other. So you don't need all the, all the homologous pairs. You only need only one set. 
So it's not like you have half a fungus, you have pretty much all the DNA that you need, right? So anyways, these are haplite spores, they go over there, they fly over there, wherever they want. In this case, they're going to fly and infect this flowering, beautiful flowering tree. Okay, now look what happens to the beautiful flowering tree. And then it grows into this fungus. Now over there, it's dividing by mitosis, okay? It's dividing by mitosis, that's asexual reproduction, right? So it's dividing by mitosis, that's called asexual reproduction, and making more spores and making more colonies. And what can it do? It can see these tiny buds over there, it can just eat them up and just kill them like that. That's called blighted blossoms. And can, because blighted blossoms, we you know, eaten up blossoms, blossoms that would have been blossoms, right? Or if there's a fruit around over there, they can go infect the fruit, right? So now look, okay? So here, the fungus over here, now this came, this came from, from a spore that came from the ground, right? So this is the asco, uh, this is the ascus, right? And inside the ascus, there's a whole bunch of spores. They're known as ascospores. It's kind of like, you know, they came from the ascus. They're called ascospores, see? Right here. Now they go over there, and then over there, they start landing over there, and they start, and then they divide. And that's by asexual uh, reproduction. That's like pure mitosis. And look at this over here. Now look at that over there. The poor thing, the fruit is just like dead, right? Now, when the fruit is all dead, you know, it's like mummy, right? The dead mummy. And this thing can fall on the ground, and there are hyphae over there. There are hyphae over there, right? A whole bunch of, and hyphae fall on the ground, and that's over here. And then, out of these hyphae that's fallen over there on the ground, you make these specialized structures that are the mushrooms that are going to be specialized to make the ascus, which makes the ascus spores. Now, the ascus is very special because that's where the sexual reproduction occurs in these species. See, over there with the flower over there in the plant, this is asexual reproduction. They're produced by you know, mitosis type of thing. But over here, you're going to have sexual reproduction, which means you're going to take two haploid nuclei, join them together, make a diploid. That is genetic material coming together, not, yeah? Not cells coming together, it's nucleus, genetic material coming together. Does that we follow? So, these fungi therefore have two types of reproduction. Sexual reproduction here, and asexual reproduction of, of somewhere else. Does that make sense? And they don't have to be close by, they could be like 100 meters away or something like that, you follow? Okay. So now, look at this, so Ascomycotes, the saffron, there are two types of spores therefore. Ah. The spores are produced either by asexual reproductions, and when they do that, like on the flower fire, you remember on the fruit and the flower, that's asexual reproduction. And they make these structures, okay? Now these structures kind of cute looking structures, but obviously they're doing the damage, right? These structures are called conidiophores. Kind of cool looking name, like conidiophores, right? So this is an electron, this is a scanning electron microscope. Yes, it's a scanning electron micrograph, right? Not a transmission electron to go through and through, scanning like that. So this is an asexual reproduction, the conidiophores. And then there is a sexual reproduction which occurs in the ascospores, right? In the sacs, in the, uh, which results in production of ascospores in the sacs, which are called the ascus, and that's over there. And this, what kind of ex what kind of picture is this? Uh, this is a uh, electron microscope. No, I just think this is like a light microscope image, right? Okay. So, so that's you. You does that make sense? Okay. So there are two types of spores produced. One by asexual reproduction, the other by uh, sexual reproduction in the sacs called ascus, and the spores that are produced in the ascus are called ascospores. So now this is this picture brings all of it together, see? So when the plant is doing this thing over here, and that's over there in the tree or whatever, right? It's making these, it has hyphae. So it spores lands on the, on the tree, one spore starts to give all these hyphae, and some of the hyphae specialize into these conidiophores. And those conidiophores make other spores. And those spores, which are haploid, can go on and make other know, colonies of fungi, right? So this is the asexual reproduction that occurs via conidiophores. Now, 
Sometimes these kinetophores can just land on the ground. Okay, now when that happens, look at this. Now there's a specialized structure that's going to be produced over here. Then they're going to come over here. And then you're going to make this, you know, cup-shaped thingy over there. And inside the cup-shaped thingy, you will see the ascus being produced over there. And here's a higher magnification of what's going on over there. See, now you're going to make the ascus, see, the glory itself, and you get a bit, your tiny nuclei going in one big nuclei. What do you think is happening over there? That's combining two haploids in the nuclei in your cell to make one zygote, which is a diploid. And then you know what happens? So this is meiosis over here, you know? This, uh, this is like uh, um, fertilization or com making a zygote. So this is a zygote, if you can right here. And then what happens, the zygote, now it's 2N, right? The zygote is 2N, right? And then it does meiosis over here and makes another N spores, okay? Now all the spores that are formed, therefore, are not diploid because this is diploid and they're haploid spores like this. And therefore, they go in the air and they land on a tree or wherever, right? So this is sexual reproduction occurs in the ascus, and then when they release over here, they release spores, they go over there. But I gotta tell you, when the nucleus, the two genetic material combines, that results in genetic variability. Because meiosis is the process that it results in genetic variability. There's crossing over, depends on how the chromosomes are lined up and things like that. So sexual reproduction results in genetic variability. The spores that are produced over here are genetically different than the spores that are produced over here. Does that make sense? Okay. So, now most ascomycotes reproduce asexually by producing conidia in the conidiophores. Conidia are the spores that are produced by conidiophores. Fair enough, right? That's the hyphae. Some hyphae specialize to give you the conidiophore, which produce the conidia, which gives rise to the spores. Okay? Now, and here's the picture I showed you of the conidiophore and each individual one is this tiny spore is going to fly off. So now this whole thing is the conidiophore asexual reproduction and here's some examples of that. Now the ascomycotes, the sac fungi, they produce ascospores during sexual reproduction which occurs over here, right? And this whole thing is the ascus and those are all spores that are lined up. Now once they are formed like this, okay, they are released like this. Watch. One at a time. There should be more. Uh oh, let's try again. See? Now look at this. It's gonna come. Slowly they're released. There you go. One at a time. Go. One at a time. See? So that's how that's how that works. Now, to elaborate on this, now remember, this structure was formed, this whole big structure was formed, right? The cup structure it looks like here, by the hyphae that landed in the water, right? The, it turns out that there are two types of hyphae, okay? So you can call them whatever. You, you can't even call them male and female, but whatever that means when you talk about fungi, right? So you can't, don't call them male and female because you can't really tell the difference between the two, except that they're different, right? So, so you call them plus, and you call the other one minus, or you call this one minus, but then you call them plus. You follow, you just call, give them plus or minus. So they're, but they're different, okay? So two pluses, for example, they can't mm, uh, come together. Those nuclei don't come. So they have to be specific types of hyphae. So plus mating type, spore, and negative mating type, spore. So when these two types are, are, are to, uh, close by, they come together like this into a network of mycelium like this, and they start producing the structure. Now, how do they know how to do that? I don't know, but they secrete these chemicals and things. They're more, more, you have to understand, you know, these things have been around longer than you and I have been around, at least from a science point of, point of view, right? Millions of years have taken, well, billions of years have been taken for these things to evolve, right? So, anyway, so plus and minus type spores come together over here. Now, look what's happening. They come together and they make one big structure one big structure with a whole bunch of nuclei and they go over there and they start making the ascus over there. You follow? Okay, does that make sense? And the nuclei combine to give a zygote in the ascus. 
So here's the same thing again, okay? So let's start with the spore. This is the end spore from the hyphae. There's another one. You can call this one plus, and you can call this one minus if you want, all right? They come together over here, see? Hyphae of different mating types, of different mating types, come and fuse together like this, okay? Once they fuse together, they collect their nuclei over here. Structures containing many nuclei form like this. And those many nuclei make the huge, big, huge community of nuclei, right? And those give rise to special structures that make the ascus, right? Now, if you go follow this ascus producing hyphae over here, now look what happens in one of them. In every, like, in one of them, you see the two nuclei, black dot and a white dot. So the black dot came from here, a white dot came from there. So a black dot and a white dot. And then, now look at this. Now you have the black dot and the white dot come together, and that's a diploid nuclei. That's a zygote. It's a 2N nuclei. But then, immediately, the zygote, okay, goes through meiosis. One zygote, as you recall, makes four baby set nuclei, right? By the process of meiosis with genetic variability, right? And then, they divide by mitosis to produce the spores, which are N, right? So the zygote is here only for a brief period of time, so to speak, over here, at least in the picture, right? And then it divides immediately by meiosis to give N. Therefore, in this case also, the majority of the life cycle of this fungus is in a haploid state. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, one of the most famous of the ascomycotes that you eat and see every single day, probably, are yeast. Yeast are ascomycotes too. They're sac fungi. Now, they can make sacs too, but they don't look like sac. These are, these are very special, okay, because they're like unicellular type thing. They don't make like mycelium type stuff. So they're a very special category of their own, okay? Now, why are yeast important? Well, yeast important because you need them to make bread, make the bread fluffy, you know, stuff like that, okay? So... They can make spores, and their spores are different like the ones this, right? But they mostly reproduce by budding. We talked about budding, remember? You can make a little bud and DNA duplicates and they go into two. Here you see a whole, whole bunch of budding occurring. Now what yeast do in bread, see? Yeast, just like anything else, they want to eat stuff. So they eat the stuff, the carbohydrates that in bread, for example. And as a metabolism of the carbohydrates in the bread, okay, the starch in the bread, they produce carbo carbon dioxide, which is gas, ethanol, which is actually alcohol, it's like in beer and wine, things like that, and they get energy for themselves. And it is the carbon dioxide that they produce by tons that makes the bread go fluffy because this air makes the bread expand. So that's what yeast do. They're quite fun, guy. Now, now, what do they do that? Why do they do that? And we hinted on this before, see? Yeast cannot do aerobic uh, respiration, okay? So, so they, they, what they do is when they, they take the glucose and they turn it into pyruvate as part of uh, cellular respiration, as part of their cellular respiration, okay? And ordinarily, once we get the pyruvate from glucose, us, not the yeast. As we take that pyruvate, we put it in the mitochondria, get some NAD, FADH2, all of that, put that in the electron transport chain, and get out of like another 30 ATPs or something like that. So majority of the ATP that's produced or liberated from a glucose metabolism comes after the step, right? This is the first step of glycolysis, uh, the first step of cellular respiration, glycolysis is. But the yeast don't do that. See, the yeast take the pyruvate, or pyruvic acid, okay, and they metabolize it. Now, why do they do that and why is it important? See, if, if we did not have oxygen, okay, we could not do anything with the pyruvate because the second, third step of the cellular respiration, if you recall, or maybe you're trying to forget, it's the second and third step of cellular respiration in the mitochondria and electron, they need oxygen. If there's no oxygen around, you're stuck with all this pyruvate. And that's a bad thing because the whole shot would have to be closed because 
this NADP, NADH just accumulate, 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 and it will be like a wrench in the machinery to stop. Okay? So you have to do something with the power rate. So you have to regenerate NAD plus C. Uh, if, because if this keeps getting bigger, bigger, bigger concentration, then the whole thing stops. So that's what the yeast do. If there is no uh, oxygen, even for us, you know, if, if we, somebody does a lot of exercise, right, you know, and we can't keep up with the oxygen demand, okay, we take the pyruvate and turn it into lactic acid. That's called lactic acid fermentation. Some bacteria do too. Some yeast do that too. But the yeast that we use in bread take the pyruvate and they convert it into alcohol, which is ethanol, okay, and CO2. And most of the alcohol in the bread that yeast make, alcohol like beer, alcohol, wine, alcohol, evaporates. Okay, so it doesn't take on even alcohol. But if you like trace amounts of alcohol it's still there, in bread, you understand? And the CO2 makes the bread fluffy. Yes? Okay. So that's 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 called alcohol fermentation that these fungi do. So they take the pyruvic acid, they 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 Get, produce CO2 from it and they make ethanol from it and as a result look what happens they take the NADH2 and they make NAD out of it see they, they regenerate this so the glycolysis can go back and this this is not interrupted truncated does that make sense okay so this is what happens in these so if you have a loaf of bread it has sugars and proteins and carbohydrates and you add a little bit of yeast to it the yeast start eating all them carbohydrates Right? and start making a lot of CO2. When they start making a lot of CO2 after breaking all that carbohydrate, the bread gets bigger because it's, it goes bigger from the bubbles of the carbon dioxide. Right? So that's what yeast do. See? Do, do. They just eat there and just cause the thing to go bread. Like that. So that's how that works. Yeast are very useful in other things besides the fact that people make beer and wine out of it, use it for bread. Okay, there's a different type of lactobacillus that you use to making cheese. Aspergillus and other fungus that use to make soy sauce and everything. This is lactic acid fermentation, and these are ethanol fermentation. Okay, they make uh, uh, um, they 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 make uh, alcohol and the CO two. And that's it. We talked about zygomycotes and we talked about ascomycotes. The next one are the basidiomycotes and this is like the fungi as in the fungi that you and I typically think. When we say a fungi, you don't think yeast, do you? No, you don't. You think of the you know, fungus, you know, the umbrella type looking fungus. And that's the next category, basidiomycotes, which we'll talk about after a brief pause then. As-salatu wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.